So one of the ways that you could calculate the volume uh, that can be held by a, a component such as this would be uh, to create a new part in an assembly uh, which you would then copy these internal surfaces highlighted in green here into uh, so you can uh, you can do what's called a publish on this geometry so all these faces on the inside here you publish them uh, and then you copy them into the new part uh, and then once you've capped the top off in the new part so this open section here you can then calculate the volume that uh, that is occupied so we, we're just going to run through the steps that you need to go through to achieve this so the first thing that you're going to want to do is publish the geometry that you're going to import into the new part and the way that you do that is you go insert shared data and publish geometry and then you're going to have to click while holding the control key round on all the surfaces that you want to make a copy of so just keep holding the control key down when you click uh, you obviously have to let go to rotate the view but then hold it down again and just go around and select all these surfaces that you want to make a copy of so we've got them all there we can uh, OK that and what happens then is you get a new feature in the feature tree which is published geometry and then an ID number now at this point you might want to rename that just to give it uh, a name which is more relevant to you so we'll have this as uh, case underscore volume uh, so now that we've created that we need to uh, create a new assembly so you just go file menu new click on the assembly option and then again give this uh, a relevant name so we'll give this uh, case plus volume okay and what we've got here is the new assembly it's empty at the moment it doesn't have any parts in it so we're going to import our case into this assembly so we click here uh, add component to the assembly and then you can find it on the local disk uh, navigate your way to your part or you can click on this in session option at the top and that shows you all the parts that are currently open uh, inside Creo so we've got the case here if we double click on that the case comes into the assembly uh, now we want to define where this is placed within the assembly so if you go into placement uh, and switch off the automatic option switch it across to coordinate system and then you select the part coordinate system here just click on that and then you want to align that with the assembly coordinate system here so just click on that and there you go because it's all turned yellow here and it's all uh, opaque that means it's fully uh, fully uh, placed and constrained so you can OK that now the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a new part that we will uh, import that published geometry into so again if we go file new new part and let's call this part uh, uh, case in a volume okay so we've got a, a new part here which is an empty part and then if we go back to the assembly and import that part into the assembly again it's in session it's currently open so you can just click on in session case in a volume open and you can see uh, no solid geometries come in but we have got these datum planes here which means it has imported successfully and again if we go to placement coordinate system and we want to align that part coordinate system with the assembly coordinate system so you can see it's jumped across and that's okay now 
Now the next thing that we want to do is we want to uh, go in and edit this new part and pull across the geometry that we've published from the case. Uh, so the first thing that we might want to do before we do that is we might want to turn on the uh, features in this assembly tree because at the moment uh, these parts uh, are only represented uh, at the uh, assembly level. We want to see the features within each part. So you click on settings, tree filters and features. Okay. So now what you can do is you can get into these parts and see the features which uh, are present within them. And then we want to right click on the uh, empty case volume part and click on activate. And as you can see the uh, main case part now has been uh, greyed out which means uh, that's not active at the moment. We're currently editing the uh, inner volume part that we created. And what we want to do while we're editing that is go insert shared data copy geometry and what this allows us to do is any published geometry within the assembly it allows us to click on it you can see as we hover over uh, the published geometry it highlights and then if we click on that we've now made a copy of that internal published geometry into this inner volume part. So if we uh, right click on the case inner volume and go to open you can see now that in our case inner volume part we've got a copy of the inside of the main case. So if we want to find the volume for this we're going to have to cap this top section off because at the moment uh, there is no internal volume because it's not fully watertight. So the way that we do this is we would create a sketch on this top plane and then we would grab these edges so that edge and that edge and the uh, software has now selected all the edges so that they form a loop and it's asking do we want to accept this and we'll accept and we'll accept that they are a loop and then quit out of that tool and OK the sketch. So we've created a sketch which is uh, coincident with the top of this box, the top edge. So we can now fill that sketch in and create a surface there, which I've just done there. Edit menu, fill. And then what we want to do is we want to merge the top surface with all these lower surfaces. So you select you click on the top surface once, click again so it turns pink, hold down control and then do the same for the bottom surface. You probably only have to click once on the bottom surface but you need to get all the surfaces pink like that and then you can go edit, merge and it will merge all those surfaces into one quilt. Now what we can do at this point is we can get a uh, volume calculation from this because it's a closed quilt that means that it would be watertight uh, it encloses a certain amount of uh, space uh, and we can calculate what that volume would be so we've gone analysis model mass properties and then what we have to do is turn it to quilt setting and then select the quilt so there you go we've got quilt F7 selected and as you can see as soon as we selected that the volume appears here and obviously we could save this as a feature if we wanted so we've just got volume selected there click on OK and you can see we've got a new mass properties feature that's appeared in the model tree so let's say uh, going back to the assembly that we uh, want to optimize uh, the size of the case using, uh, using the uh, volume of that uh, quilt feature uh, as the uh, measurement that we're, uh, we're going to aim for. 
Now the way that we do that is you got is we make sure that we're editing at the uh, assembly level. So we don't want any of the parts active like this. We want to make sure the assembly is active. And then we insert the mass properties feature at the assembly level. But we could, we're still allowed to select part quilts. So you can see I've flicked that across to quilt, selected that quilt which is now sat inside the main box, and I can save that as a feature. OK. So you can see the mass properties uh, feature isn't inside either one of the parts. Uh, we do have a copy of a mass properties feature inside the case in a volume, but we can delete that now. That was just an example. It's the one at the assembly level here that we're going to use for the uh, feasibility study. So now what we can do is go analysis, feasibility, there we go, and one of the design constraints can be the volume from Mass Properties 1. Now this is only uh, going to work if that Mass Properties is at the assembly level. If it's within one of the parts, then you cannot reference it from the assembly level. So before we put a value in there, let's see what it currently uh, is at. So we're going down to Info Feature. Let's have a look. 3.4 times 10 to the 5. So let's go for something reasonably near that. So here we go. Feasibility. Set. Uh, 3.9 times 10 to the 5. OK. And then we can quit out of there and we can add some dimensions that we're going to allow it to change. So for this we need to open up the case part and go to the sketch which defines the size of the box. So here's my sketch and then give it one or more dimensions that you're going to allow it to modify. And then you can set the minimum and maximum range that you'll allow it to change that those dimensions to. So you put those in there and then compute and you can see up here it's optimizing step one of optimization so you just have to wait until the feasibility solution has been successfully found so if you close this now and what it's saying is the model has been changed do you want to keep the change or undo the change we'll keep the change so that's how you uh, create a new part and take a copy of the inside of some geometry, uh, get a volume measurement from that at an assembly level, and then use that volume measurement to run a feasibility study, which will then modify the original part. But you do it all at the assembly level. You don't do it at the part, at the part level you only create the published geometry at the part level. So once you've done this, you're going to want to save the assembly. Save the assembly with the part file so that the two will always be together.